tear us apart. We could live for a thousand years, but if I hurt you, I make one. We could fly, 'cause we all have wings. But some of us don't know why. I was standing, you were there. Sweetness and kindness and wisdom and brightness, 
It's about being strong when you're feeling quite weak. It's about saying nothing when you're dying to speak. It's about being wrong when you were right. It's about giving in before there's a fight. It's about the two of you living cheaply as one. And give us a call if you know what that's done. <laughs> never heeding advice that's always well meant. Never comes in the cost until it's all spent. And for you two today, it's about to begin. And for all that the two of you put in, some days full of joy and some days with sadness. Too late to discover that marriage is my place. <laughs> <laughs> ourselves freely and without reserve into the hands of the one we love. And in so doing, each receives the love and trust of the other as a precious gift. All of you here have played some part in bringing Alex and Al to this moment. Marriage is a promise, not a promise that life will always be perfect, but a promise that there will always be someone who cares at your side. It does not promise eternal romance, but eternal love and commitment. Marriage cannot prevent disappointment, sadness or grief, but it can bring acceptance, hope and comfort. And marriage is the union of two people who share this promise. So Alex and Hal, the purpose of marriage is that you may always love, care for and support each other through both the joys and sorrows of life. Today you will exchange vows of marriage which will unite you as husband and wife. And these vows are a promise of lifelong commitment giving your families and friends the opportunity to meet together in celebration of your happiness, imparting their own message of love and support. But before we can proceed with the ceremony, I have to assure you all that this place in which we are now met has been duly sanctioned according to the law for the celebration of marriages. And you are here today to witness the joining in matrimony of Howell Morgan Jones and Alexandra Clare Roberts. Any person here present knows of any lawful impediment to this marriage. They must declare it now. It's okay <laughs> Before you are joined in action, may I have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows you are about to make. Marriage, according to the laws of this country, is the union of two people voluntarily entered into for life and to the exclusion of all others. So I'm going to ask each of you in turn to declare that there is no legal reason why you may not be married to each other. And we always begin with the group. So would you say the words after me? I do solemnly declare I do solemnly declare that I know not that I know not of any lawful impediment that of, of any lawful impediment why I, Hal Morgan Jones why I, Hal Morgan Jones may not be joined in matrimony may not be joined in matrimony to Alexandra Clare Roberts. To Alexandra Clare Roberts. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not. That I know not of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, Alexandra Clare Roberts. Why I, Alexandra Clare Roberts may not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Hal Morgan Jones. To Hal Morgan Jones. So, Alex and Hal, we've invited your guests here today to receive their encouragement and support and to celebrate with you. So I ask you now, in their presence, Hal, do you take Alex to be your lawful wedded wife, to be loving, loyal and faithful to her for the rest of your lives together? I will. And Alex, do you take Hal to be your lawful wedded husband, to be loving, loyal and faithful to him for the rest of your lives together? I do. You two can sit down and have a little breather because it's Hillary's turn and she's got a reading now for us. <coughs> I love you because you're my future, my present and part of my past. My world has been turning so quickly, the time keeps moving so fast. I love you, I love you because you have something no ordinary person can give. A warmth that I'll cling to forever and hold on to as long as I live. I love you because your devotion is tender and wonderfully rare. Could anyone ever imagine the magic moments we share? I love you because you are truthful, your eyes are the key to my heart. 
tell me you share my commitment and say it will not be apart. I love you. I love you because you are wonderful. You give me all that I need. A cut when I seek your assurance <laughs> and a smile when we disagree. I love you because I just love you for too many reasons to say. And I'll always be right there beside you, a breath and a heartbeat away. So now we move on to the formal vows of marriage and to the promises that Hal and Alex have chosen to make to each other. Would you all like to stand with them to support them? And Sam, would you like to come and take the bouquet now? So you've both declared that you're free and you're willing to marry each other. So you're now going to make your formal vows. You go first again, Hal, so I want you to say the words after me. The you are going to say them to me. I call upon. I call upon these persons here present. These persons here present to witness that I, Hal Morgan Jones, to witness that I, Hal Morgan Jones, do take you, Alexander Clare Roberts, do take you, Alexander Clare Roberts, to be my lawful wedded wife, to be my lawful wedded wife, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. Amen. I call upon. I call upon these persons here present. These persons here present to witness that I, Alexandra Clare Roberts, to witness that I, Alexandra Clare Roberts, do take you, Howell Morgan Jones, do take you, Howell Morgan Jones, to be my lawful wedded husband, to be my lawful wedded husband, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. So now we come to the giving and receiving of the wedding rings. The exchange of rings is the traditional way of sealing the vows that you've just made. A wedding ring is an unbroken circle to symbolise unending and everlasting love, and it's the outward sign of the lifelong promise you have made to each other. So, Matt, if you'd like to do the honours for us. <laughs> Sorry, <I'm talking. laughs> very much. You can see which one's which are, can't we? If you'd like to take Alex's ring and put it onto the tip of her ring finger and hold it down. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of our love. As a symbol of our love. I will cherish our union. I will cherish our union. Laugh with you and cry with you. Laugh with you and cry with you. Trust and respect you. Trust and respect you. I give you my hand, my heart, and my love. I give you my hand, my heart, and my love. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a symbol of our love. As a symbol of our love. I will cherish our union. I will cherish our union. Laugh with you and cry with you. Laugh with you and cry with you. Trust and respect you. Trust and respect you. I give you my hand, my heart, and my love. I give you my hand, my heart, and my love. And now would you all like to sit down again to help because it's the only person. She has a better ring. The wonders of today. If you can always be as close and happy as today, but be secure enough to know the change along the way. If you can keep for you alone, your love is now in life. But find a time to share your joy with others in your life. If you can be as one and walk through marriage hand in hand, yet still support the goals and dreams each that each of you have planned. If you can dare to always go your separate ways together, then all the wonders of today will stay with you. <laughs> United over the years. May the hopes and dreams that you have shared, your belief in and devotion to each other continue to sustain you in the future. And we all wish you many more happy years together. And in those years, may your love continue to grow and deepen. 
so Alex and Hal, you have made the declarations required by law, you have made a solemn and binding contract in the presence of your witnesses and the registrar of your witnesses. So it now gives me a very great pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations. <laughs>
lasted through the trials and pressures of any and all long-distance relationships. That, in its own right, is a testament to them and the strength of their love for each other. Ergo, we find ourselves here today. How is my second son? Or... <laughs> James and Howard have a joint interest in, and love of, football. They also share one other passion. They're both audio-phobic. A video-phobic sort of. Yes, they're both scared to death of a video. Harold is so bad he can't even bear to watch them on TV. You're all wondering <laughs> <laughs> this always makes their visit to Thailand very interesting, to say the least. We do have a number of snake varieties in some groups, some of which like to pay home visits. Alex finally convinced Hal to fly to Thailand with her in 2009, and they came to stay with Joe and myself. We actually lived in a three-bedroom villa with its own swimming pool, so it's not too bad a place to visit. In fact, since coming over to stay our first year, we can answer them coming. In fact, even brave the old snake starting as he does seem to love swimming in the typhoon. They know that they will always be one of them. I'm not sure how many of you are aware that Alex is Alex, we know it's and is half Scottish and half Welsh. Both are paternal grandparents of Cardiffians. And her maternal great grandmother was born and brought up in Spot. I am told that nowadays it's been gentrified to Spur. <laughs> Spot is a suburb of Hollywood, Cardiff. And for the non Welsh year, sorry, I'm not going to print that all wrong. Spot is a suburb of Cardiff for the non Welsh year. Alex's great grandfather's worked for Brain Breweries and the National Coal Board is not doing it. Because I know I'm Welsh because I'm hard pressed to get through me without spilling a food all down myself. A trait was passed down from my father. I'm told by reliable sources that Howell's father, Colin, is exactly the same genetic trait. <laughs> my mother was thrilled when she met Howell because she was convinced he was a rugby player. <laughs> Despite far from the valleys, he's a lovely boy. That brings me neatly to my mother, who sadly is not well enough to be here with us today. I know she sends her love and blessings and has told me I have to take her back some cake and one of the Welsh spoons. In addition, I would like to mention both Pippa's mother and father and my father who are sadly no longer with us, and they know Alex will have a private moment at some point to think of them later. On a more general note, let us think of absent friends who are unable to be with us today for a variety of reasons. It was Anne Rose with Pierce who said that love is a temporary insanity, curable only by marriage. <laughs> I think that Nietzsche was closer to the mark when he said that it's not a lack of love that makes unhappy marriages, but rather a lack of friendship. Very importantly, how and Alex are best of friends, and as can be told from the amount of time they spend together on the rooms. And last but not least, I think it was Samuel Johnson who said that marriage has many pains, but celibacy has no pleasures. <laughs> In closing, I would like to wish the new Mr. and Mrs. Jones the very best of you. I would further like to impose a toast. May your joy be everlasting, and may any pain you have be shown. Ladies and gentlemen, please be 
be upstanding and raise your glasses to the bride and groom. Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Alex's best brother, nor, nor in fact because I'm her actual brother, um, but uh, um, uh, pretty much because I've known her all her life. Um, she actually asked me when she was younger whether I would be her brother. I think even though she was young at the time, she realised she only had Hannah and Rebecca to look up to, so wanted a bit more of a, a positive role model. <laughs> It's a great pleasure to be here and, and to say a few words about this uh, wonderful young woman. Um, in preparation for this speech, I was looking for who said, uh, friends are the family you choose. Um, the answers on Google, if you're interested, range from George Washington to Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> which um, I think means that no one actually knows. But the reason, uh, the reason I wanted to, uh, to, to look at that was I wanted to credit whoever said um, what really exemplifies for me how I... I feel about Alex and indeed her whole family. Um, I, I don't have a, a little sister. I, I like to think that if I did, I would be a thoroughly embarrassing big brother. Um, I've, I've tested this theory several times on Alex. Um, it, uh, it ranges from adopting a brummy accent and shouting at her across a shopping centre to uh, spontaneously getting a uh, queue in Burger King at Euston to uh, sing her happy birthday in January. Um, but of course, I, I know, being a good fake older brother, that her birthday's in May. <laughs> Joy, Joy, it's in July. Um, I, I actually threatened uh, that I was going to do this entire speech in a loud, brummy accent. But don't worry, Alex, I'm not going to embarrass you on your wedding day. Um, I'm going to embarrass myself. But, but, um, having known Alex uh, most of her life, I've known her as Alex, as Alexandra, uh, as uh, as. Rob and uh, my favourite as uh, skinny malinky uh, long legged big banana feet. Um, and who would have thought that this tiny skinny malinky long legged big banana feet, uh, who used to annoy her big sisters so much, would have grown up to be this amazing woman who's here in front of us today? In actual fact, I think anyone who's ever known Alex would have always thought that she was going to turn out to be this amazing person. As the, uh, as the youngest of three girls, Alex was often surrounded by people older than her, which meant that occasionally she was a little bit opinionated. Um, it meant that she had formed opinions on geopolitics by the time she was eight. And, um, and uh, uh, being, being a Roberts girl, uh, she, she loves to play host. Uh, she's an excellent cook and uh, loves a glass of wine. Uh, and a night out with dancing. Uh, you may not actually know, but uh, Alex has become uh, an expert interpretive dancer. Um, which, which usually means that after a drink it takes a lot of interpretation to figure out what she's doing on the dance floor. Um, unfortunately, Alex's love of wine has uh, often leads to uh, one of her epic hangovers. Uh, a trait that she shares with with uh, Hannah and Rebecca. Uh, after a Friday night out, uh, Alex will quite often still be feeling quite unwell on the Saturday night. Um, but she has now mastered her hangovers. She can time her trips to the bathrooms with the commercial breaks of X Factor, um, and often even taking it in turns with uh, Hannah and Rebecca, who've undoubtedly been out with her the night before. Uh, 
but when they're not uh, hungover and overusing your bathroom, they're actually, uh, they're actually uh, a lovely, uh, lovely group to spend time with. Um, they, uh, they, they have uh, the ability to make each other laugh in a way that I've only ever known of them. Um, often at the end of their sort of protracted uh, hysterics, they'll they'll stop and try and figure out what started them laughing in the first place. Can't remember what it was, and that often starts them all over again. Gets tired after a while, but you know it's quite amusing the first time around. Um, Alex would do anything for her sisters now, but uh, that hasn't always been the case, or at least she hasn't always done it for free. Um, <laughs> When, when she was younger, she used to uh, demand payment to do favours for the girls, ranging from uh, 10p to go and fetch something f t from her room, or a pound to side with them in an argument. Um, <laughs> they paid me to do things for them. <laughs> yeah, well, when they get married, you know. It's all <laughs> Unfortunately, Alex, uh, Hannah and Rebecca are getting their, uh, their revenge tonight. They're waiting to give you an invoice for their bridesmaids' duties. <laughs> um, from, from, her, uh, from a very young age, Alex showed herself as, uh, as very generous and kind. Um, as far back as I can remember, she was always happy to share her older sister's glass of wine or, or, um, or, or borrow their ID. Um, she was giving quite generously of her time and would, would happily escort us on a night out in Watford. We, of course, wouldn't see her after she got past the, uh, the bouncers until she needed to be carried home at the end. But, uh, <laughs> Alex, um, Alex has a, a love of food and fine dining and nice restaurants, but she's, she's just as happy in Pizza Express as she is at the Park Lane Hilton. Um, provided that she's in good company, of course in bad company she insists on two Michelin stars, but um, her, um, her love of food and, uh, and of course being, being her mother's daughter has made her an excellent cook. Um, I understand that she's opened Howl's eyes to a number of different tastes. He hasn't always known that he's been having his eyes open to a number of different tastes. Um, from, from very early on in their relationship, she would start sneaking foods into, uh, into his diet, only to tell him months later that he tried something that he'd previously, uh, previously not been willing to have a go at. Um, you think you know what you had for dinner tonight, but uh, <laughs> I'd have a word with her afterwards. <laughs> Um, Hal and Alex make uh, such a lovely couple. As, as Simon said, um, I'm always inspired by your sense of fun, um, how you challenge each other and you motivate each other to try new things. Um, your relatively recent adoption of golf has become a, a great hobby uh, for the two of you to do together. It's made you very boring in the pub, but, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the two of you. Uh, <laughs> And I'd like to finish on a, a genuine note and say, uh, how lovely boy, um, you, you've become one of my best friends. Uh, to, it's a pleasure to know you. It's an honour to have been asked to be an usher for you today. Um, and I'm so glad that uh, you and Alex have chosen each other. Um, Alex, even though I'm not your big brother, I'm so proud of you. Um, your mum, uh, Hannah, um, just want me to say that they love you so much. Um, and we all do. Um, Everything you do, you do with grace, with elegance, with generosity and kindness, and, and a wicked sense of fun. Um, you look beautiful today. Uh, when I wrote this, I couldn't quite picture it. I did actually write it when I wrote this. <laughs> but you do, you look, uh, you look absolutely uh, stunning today. And I wish the two of you nothing but love and happiness for your marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. extremely special day. It means so much to me that you could come along today, particularly with it falling on a Friday and some of you have to take days off work to share the celebrations and make this occasion to remember. So can you raise your glasses and join me and say, now I'm your aunties and happy international tour like a pirate.
<laughs> and they'll be speaking the rest of his speech like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, the sentence that I just said are generally the same for the reason that you are all here. And I truly mean it when I say my wife and I. So my wife and I are honoured they know we to share the happiest day of our lives. I would also like to say thank you very much for all the kind gifts that we've received from you all. Um, one of the things that we've, from the outset we've discussed is how nice it is that we both know each and every one of you living here today. So to all our family and friends, can I raise a glass? And also just like I mentioned at this point, one of the favours that we've left you on the tables. Um, first of all, the two, thank you very much for the, the brilliant job that she's done with that. so much to us. And it's at this point I'd like to say how honoured I am that I uh, passed the Rob's Girls Inquisition. <laughs> James and Ed, Annie D. Martin will testify as to what a nerve-wracking experience it is <laughs> when you're facing the mic of uh, Rebecca, Alex and Hannah for the first time. <laughs> and that's just an easy thing because then we all have a past tense for the pop person's <laughs> Um, <laughs> but all of us, I'm sure, would agree that the induction ceremony is worth it, because they're all fantastic family. Um, getting your seven chicken is just as much fun. Man, you can learn to make 35 degree heat on a tropical island, knocking back the only brew blogger and discussing the ups and downs of the Welsh Rugby National Rugby Team. And indeed, Washington bring on the Grand Slam. <laughs> Uh, so for the best thing I was anyone could ask for, and for the kindness, not just for today, but from the day that I first met them all, can I ask you to raise your glass? Well, we've got to renew what we asked Simon and to accept his gift, but Simon's gift is that the Royal Mail didn't arrive. She also threw in a box, but I don't know if you can accept his gift, can we have a toast to Simon <laughs> No post no I'm proud to say that uh, offering a warm welcome is not just exclusive to the Roberts clan. It's also something my family know a lot about. Alex knows my mum and dad from the world, uh, and I know that there is a they can be that she's now their daughter in law. I also know that all my uncles, aunts, and cousins are delighted that Alex is now part of their family. Mum and dad have always given me everything, not only material possessions, but emotionally as well. Uh, but paradoxically, there's one thing you can't have as an only child, and that's a brother or a sister. When I was a little kid, I always wanted one. But then I wasn't very young when I broke down, and my parents realised they wouldn't be able to improve on perfection. And they were not prepared. Now, we've had our moments, but they've always been there for me. They know they mean the world to me. And they've also, helped, they've also helped to make me this time extremely special for me and Alex. So we'd like to thank them and ask you to raise a glass while they accept these gifts, both of which we didn't write. Thank you. 
Ciao, qui qua. Right, just, just a brief touch on something that Simon mentioned in his speech. Um, there's a few people from both sides of the family that Alex and I wish could be here just to share the day with us. Um, but in particular, I'd like to mention, or talk about, talk about what Simon mentioned, my aunt Yvonne and my nan. Um, I know they would be the proudest person to be here to be here and see this. Um, to me, it's no coincidence that both of them would always use exactly the same phrase when they refer, refer to Alex and they'd say that they loved it a bit. I don't know what they both said. I think it showed how important it was for them that I was happy and how confident that they were that Alex made me happy. So, can I just raise a glass to those that are not? I think that's a stand up job. Yvonne and Nan. Yvonne and Nan. <laughs> and now I know my gorgeous wife. Oh. She's had to be nine years since you say that. I bet she's my wife now, it's not that she's all children. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's genuinely impossible to put in words what she means to me. I know I'm the envy of hundreds of men, but with the good looks, Charming smile, wicked personality. I could go on, but let's get back to Alex. <laughs> As most of you know, I've got it, you all know, because Simon mentioned it, uh, we met her all over the pavilions when she was working behind the bar. And as we said, that last summer, nine years ago, when we were getting to know each other, that was the most fun and exciting time I've ever known. I also know pretty quick, I knew pretty quickly that she was the girl for me. Our age gap raised a few eyebrows at first. People were wondering what a 19 year, a 19 year old university student was doing with somebody with a mental age of five. <laughs> but I think, I think, I don't know, but I think, <laughs> soon enough our family and friends realised that we were made for each other. I was never in any doubt, Alex is the most loyal, determined, funny, sweet-natured, intelligent, and I really, really could go on this time. There's no punchline, she's all those uh, personal I know. Um, I was the proudest man alive when she agreed to go on that date with me nine years ago. Uh, Notwithstanding the somewhat disingenuous chat of mine that I used to get on that date. <laughs> Match possibly only by my unique style of proposal. <laughs> quite as fun in life today as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I let you all in with a little secret, and I don't watch. <laughs> but this is, this is true. Every morning before we leave for work, we shout I love you to each other from wherever we will be ready. And every night, even if we've had a little squabble, quite often we have. <laughs> but every night, we'll always need to kiss each other and say I love you again. And every time, no matter what mood I'm in, I'll always have a little smile at myself, because I know we're not going through the motions, we do both really mean it. So can I ask you all to raise a glass to the person who makes me wake up and go to sleep with a smile? Oh, oh. And makes me happy for all my waking hours as well. Oh. To the bride. To the bride. Oh. To the bride. This is Joe. Yeah. This is Joe. There's just a couple more thank yous left. Yes, yes. 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 To the ashes. And I have to say, everywhere that I've been to, I've always thought, what do the ashes actually do? And I'm going to see. And I have to say, can I have my heart? Maybe I don't want to change. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Uh, they've been absolutely, each and every one of them, they've been absolutely brilliant from the moment of the post to Alex. And they've all played an extremely important part before, during, and they will go on to after the day because there's still stuff that they need to do. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'd like to thank them. I'd like them to accept this talk of our appreciation while everyone raises the glass to my dream team. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
uncontrollable outbursts and tantrums. Yeah. These days it's called only child syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> He's in an action. <laughs> oh. Usually when he's either losing at poker, losing at golf, losing at darts, or when he's told he's round. 
Sorry, it's his rap. Back in those days, child labour was perfectly acceptable, but how was put to work at his local club? He was very popular with the locals, mainly because they were his family. He was, happy to be on either, he was happy to be on either side of the bar and often enjoyed the perks of the job. Eventually, he loved his, left his bar job to pursue his career in entertainment, and it wasn't long before he won his first talent show as a Jimmy Cricket person. <laughs> Pulled him into instant stardom and landed him in a role in a top film. <laughs> and I thought he didn't like spiders. <laughs> but eventually this little boy grew up, and like a lot of Polish, Bulgarians and Romanians, he decided to come to England to steal our job. <laughs> Went to London University, met some lovely fellows from South London. Hey. But then he ended up in Watford. Now, how is well known for being outspoken? And it's rumoured that when he went for his job at the Watford Observer, from a position as the chief tea boy, I think it was, <laughs> that when, in his interview, when he was asked what his biggest weakness was, he replied, Well, I'm probably too honest. <laughs> his would be Bob said, I don't see that as a weakness. Al replied, I couldn't give a toss what you think. <laughs> <laughs> However, amazingly, he did get the job and he set up the Noxy village and soon made the Villiers Arts his second home. And it was there where we first met. I'll be totally honest with you, my first impression of Hal wasn't great. I thought he was a bullshit, arrogant know-it-all. But of course, when I got to know him better, I realised he was more too. And he was selfish as well. <laughs> <laughs> However, he was one of the funniest people I've ever met. We soon clicked, and from that moment we became great friends. He was here in the Oxford when we hoped to deal or no deal, experimenting with flying tickling. Along with all the other reprobates, you know who you all are. We play spoof at what we believe to be an international level. <laughs> I'm still spoof number one, by the way. The landlord of the Villiers was very selective when it came to his staff. The ability to pull a pint, work a till, and possibly win mastermind were very low on his tick list. Instead, he simply went for good looks. <laughs> This suited Hal very well, with his big man in tow, set about impressing these ladies with a bit of wit, a bit of charm, and a load of old bull. <laughs> this usually went down very well, leaving the barmaid in no doubt she was in the company of two very intellectual fellas. <laughs> then one day it was rumoured that there was a new barmaid in the pub, so we went to investigate, and we were greeted with this vision. <laughs> Done as proud. How instantly went to charm mode and started working through his repertoire. But instead of being impressed, Alex started correcting him. And wrote up her own facts and statements. So quick, in fact, I couldn't Google him quick enough to find out whether she knew what she's talking about or whether she was playing a howl at his own okay. game. Over the coming weeks, there were some big changes in the pub. Heat magazine was replaced with books on Sudoku, <laughs> and discussions of how many Maltesers you can fit in your mouth, <laughs> and replaced with talks on criminal psychology. <laughs> it was around this time when Hal was at his lowest point regarding his love life. <laughs> now to be fair, for a man that looks less like George Clooney, more like Wayne Rooney, he's done alright with the ladies in the past. And here's proof. Close your eyes, Alex. <laughs> And like everybody else, he's had his lows too. <laughs> <laughs> and he's had his very
Jeremy Lowe's. <laughs> and some that you'd just rather not talk about. <laughs> I said, mate, if you're going gay, I'll be right behind you. I'm going to back you up. It's a good thing. Alex overheard all this. It was for the offer of services. Boasted, she'd turn people gay for four. More than one. Four. I was sceptical from the start. I thought, how can you turn this man? This testosterone filled man, who as you can see was one half of an ISIS tribute act, into this. <laughs> I couldn't see it myself. But I thought maybe Alex has seen something in that I haven't. This, for instance. <laughs> He said things were going great. He was wearing more flamboyant shirts for work. He bought a box set of Sex in the City. And he got a new appreciation for lime curtains and scented candles. And to top the lot, he and Alex that afternoon were going shopping for scatter cushions. I said, calm down, mate. One swallow doesn't make it summer. He went, oh, I haven't got to that stage yet. But I do know something that'll make you a whole week. I didn't want to know. Anyway, the outcome was, she did turn him gay. He didn't even buy those gatter cushions. <laughs> this is what happened. Aww. They fell in love. Aww. And I haven't said it before, but I told you so. <laughs> so there's a lesson for any single men out here today. Yeah. <laughs> The young, attractive, intelligent woman says she can turn you gay, just walk away. <laughs> Otherwise, one day it could be you. You could be on your stage, dude. You could end up looking like this. <laughs> All this. <laughs> and this. <laughs> Shortly after these two announced their engagement, I got a phone call from Alex's dad, Simon. He said he needed a man on the inside that can help him with a special favour. Of course, I was happy to help, so he arranged to meet. When I got there, he thrust an envelope at me containing a thousand pound in cash and simply said, do whatever it takes, but well, I want to see the back of hell once and for all. <laughs> now, now I would, <laughs> this one's for you, Simon. Go on. <laughs> Going back to Wales for the honeymoon. Well, I think it's Wales. I was over the house, so he's got a banger all week. Time, what I noticed about the relationship is the balance they strike between giving each other room to breathe and do their own thing, but also making the most of their time they have together and sharing their hobbies, which I think is pretty rare these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my only advice to you is to keep on doing what you're already doing. Yeah. For the future, I wish you lots of luck, 
Lots of love, but most of all, lots of laughter. Which brings me nicely to my final picture. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please be upstanding? <laughs>